Hello everyone. My name is Santini, daughter of Hari Krishna. My party number is 22304188. In this video, I'm going to talk about angiosperm, especially about monocotyledons. Hi everyone. My name is Ashwini Kumar. My metric number is 22303075. In this video, I'm going to explain about gymnosperm. Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Nurul Shahada binti Sayyid Azhar. My metric number is 1C1805 and I'm from School of Chemical Sciences and I will introduce you guys for pteridophyte parts. Assalamualaikum. My name is Siti Aisha binti Rahmat. My metric number is 1528874 and I'm going to talk about biophyte. Just don't. Angiosperms are the plant that produce flowers and bear their seeds in pools. They also classify into two groups, which are monocotyledon and dicotyledon. And monocotyledon have single cotyledon in their seed, for example, banana, cereals, grasses, and so on. Whereas dicotyledon have two cotyledons in their seed. These are the examples of monocotyledons. First one is orchids. It is belong to the family of Orchidaceae, a diverse and widespread group of flowering plants with bloom that often colorful and fragrant. This plant mostly found in all over the world, except glaciers. The world's richest diversity of orchid genera and species found in tropics. The importance of this plant is as ornamentals and long-lasting cut flowers. The Mexican species Vanilla planiflora has long been cultivated for the aromatic flavor of it beans. The tubers of some African species are harvested as a food source, a large number of species used in traditional medicine. Various parts of this plant are used in traditional folklore in Africa as love, dead and fertility charms. Some species are also used as aphrodisia. These are the, the characteristics of Orchidaceae plant. Uh, this picture has been taken at the Botanical Garden of Georgetown, Penang. The next one is Pineapple, which has the scientific name Ananas commosus. This plant is a tropical plant with an edible fruit and the pineapple grows as a small shrub. The individual flowers of the unpollinated plant fuse to form a multiple fruit and it also normally propagates from the offset produce at the top of the fruit and typically matches within a year. This plant undergoes a special photosynthetic pathway called cross-solution acid metabolism CM. This is a great adaptation because it allows the plant to conserve moisture. Pineapples are fairly unsustainable food. They also contribute to rainforest destruction, use monoculture farming, high amounts of pesticides and plastic packaging. However, they also have a low carbon footprint and don't require a significant amount of education. These are the characteristics of Ananas commosus. First, the importance of understanding angiosperms for conservation. It will conserve the biodiversity, it will restore the habitat of some organisms, it will conserve the pollinator, and it has the medical and economic value. It also will change the environment. To be conclude the discussion that angiosperms belong to one of the most diverse and large extent groups of plants in the universe and the flowering plants that play a very vital role in the survival of living organisms. Hello, so today I'm going to talk about the dicotyledon. Dicotyledons, the most found group in campus for dicotyledon, the large kingdom in plant classification would be found everywhere around the world. Speaking of it, the Nepenthes would be my favorite to talk about. So the Nepenthes is a genus of carnivorous plants, also known as monkey cup. And the Nepenthes species usually consist of a shallow root system and a prostrate or clumping stone. And flowers occur in racemes 
or more rarely in panicles with male and female flowers on separate plants. But anyway, we went to Kamari Highland last month, and just to find some species of Nepenthes, which is grown in the Highland. As you can see, these pictures are showing a Nepenthes species called Sanguinea, and which is very common to see in Kamari Highland. They quite love high humidity, and maybe a little bit cold temperature. Maybe they look scary, but they do cooperate with the other insects or animals, and they already are the shelters for some tiny insects, such as some species of ants. Therefore, they are playing a very pivotal role. In the bio world, once a species of them are disappeared, then the other insects or animals that cooperated with it will be disappeared as well. I really love these plants; they are mysterious and cute. Hello, guys! Welcome to the world of gymnosperm. Gymnosperms can be classified into four groups, which are Gynophyta, Nephthophyta. Cycadophyta and Coniferophyta. Let's see the plants that we have found, guys. First, we have the Chinese Arborvitae, which is known as Platycladus orientalis. This plant is adapted to range of climates, which is uh, temperate and subtropical regions. Uh, it can tolerate both summer and winters. It prefers partial shade and can grow in variety of soils, type including loam, clay, and sandy soils. We found this plant in the botanical garden Penang. Now let's look at its characteristics. This plant is a medium-sized plant that typically grows to height of 30 to 40 feet. It has scale-like leaves that are arranged in flattened sprays. The leaves are dark green in color and has a soft and feathery texture. This tree takes several years to reach its full size and it's low maintenance and easily to be pruned to maintain. This tree has its own unique adaptations which are resistant to drought. This tree is very often used as ornamental tree uh, where it's associated with long life and vitality. That's why it can be found at uh, temperate regions. Kusamaki, which is known as Podocarpus microphyllus, is a native to mountain region of Japan where it thrives cool and moist environments. It prefers brain soil and often found growing in mixed forests alongside with other coniferous species. This plant has needle-like leaves which are dark green in color. They are arranged in a spiral pattern. This tree produces a small and cylindrical cone which contains seeds for reproduction. The bark of this plant is smooth and grayish brown when young, but it becomes rough when it ages. The unique adaptation of this plant is fire resistant. The bark of this plant is thick and corky, providing protection against wildfires. This adaptation helps the tree to survive and regenerate after fire events. It is also wind resistant, where the branches are flexible and can withstand strong winds. This helps the tree to avoid breakage and damage during storms, ensuring its longevity. Okay, last but not least, a Norfolk Island pine, which is also known as Araucaria heterophylla, it can be found in temperate and tropical region. They prefer a warm and humid environments. They are adapted to tolerate high saline soils. We found this plant in USM and the Botanical Garden, Penang. This tree has a symmetrical and conical shape with tired branches that grow horizontally. And it has a soft, needle-like leaves that are dark green in color and glossy. The leaves are arranged in holes of three or four along the branches. And the branches grow a regular pattern with each hole consists of four branches. This plant has its own unique adaptation which are able to tolerate low light conditions. It prefers bright indirect light. It can still thrive in areas with less sunlight. It is also can live for several decades. Uh, it is known for its longevity and many homeowners cherish this tree as a long-term companion for their garden. That's all about Gymnosperm. Thank you. Hi. Uh, here is an explanation from me, Nur Shuhada. So in my part, I will share to you guys an explanation about the pteridophytes. I have a short visit to Botanical Park at Tristan Penang to find the species of pteridophyte division. For my visit, uh, I choose friend as my species to share more about that. There is a special house of fern that makes me able to find more types of fern. All plants in this world have their own location that they can grow successful. As for fern, there are a few types of place that fern can be grown. 
Ecologically, uh, the fern are most commonly found at shaded damp forests of both temperate and tropical zones. It is because fern are the type of plants that prefer indirect sunlight. Some fern species grow equally well on soil and upland rocks. From my view at Botanical Park, fern are most likely to found at open grassland or acid wetlands. Alright, so in this part, I will explain about the notable features of the fern within the pteridophyte division. Similar to flowering plants, fern also have fruits, stem, and leaf. However, uh, fern do not have flowers or seed. Instead of growing from seed like most flowering plants, ferns come from a single spore. Spore become gametophyte, uh, which produce male gametes and an egg structure. When fertilized, uh, the gametophytes generate a sporophyte, which are developed in sporangia. Even though these plants are seedless plants, but unlike the bryophytes, they do have vascular tissues, which are xylem and phloem. Uh, because of the presence of vascular tissue, ferns are able to move in water mineral and a product of photosynthesis through it. Uh, next part is I will introduce you more about the unique adaptation or ecological roles of fern. Fern provide a variety of contribution to the ecosystem in which they exist. For example, uh, they provide shelter, shade, chemical sequestration, and microhabitats that serve other species. Next is provide aesthetic to the cultivated landscape and make great house plan with their lush plants, air filtering capabilities and are easy to maintain. Maybe you are wondering why uh, fern can be a good air filtering, right? Basically, fern are able to absorb gases through their leaves and roots. It is the microorganism in the soil that um, help to break down many volatile organic compounds. This process is called phytoremediation. In addition, fern utilize for dyes, fibers, craft, medicine, and building materials. For instance, the root and root-like stem are used to make medicine, and people take lady fern for lung and breathing problems. Fern also help aid in erosion control and soil stabilization. Uh, as we know, the main structure of fern which perform these tasks are the rhizomes and the root system. The rhizome itself are thin, long and grow horizontally beneath the surface of the ground, help to uh, stabilize the soil. The root system of fern are well branched and add moisture to soil that helping to prevent erosion. Hello, I'm Aisha and I'm going to talk about pyrophytes. Pyrophyte is from the Greek word meaning moss plant. They generally require a moss environment for growth and reproduction. The pyrophytes are divided into three distinctive phyla which are 1. Mosses phylum virophyta, 2. Liverwood phylum hepatophyta and 3. Hornwood phylum enterocytophyta. I've been to Penang Botanical Garden to find some examples for biophyte. The first example is Hypnum cupressiform, which is also known as Hypnum moss. I found this on the moist wall of drains. It can be found in all continents except Antarctica. It grows on tree trucks, logs, walls, rock, and other surfaces. It's small to medium sized moss, about 2 to 10 cm long. The stem leaves are concave and sickle shapes. The next example is Ceratodon purpureus, is diocos moss with color ranging from yellow green to red. I found it next to road on stone. The height amounts to 3 cm. It can be found worldwide, mainly in urban areas and next to road and a dry sand soil. Its common name include red shank, fire moss, and purple fog moss. The leaves are short and hair-like, spreadly when moist, somewhat folded or twisted when dry. That's all from us. Thank you.